In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the information on pages Excel 82 and 83 in which we're going to create a chart. Now, to create a chart in Excel, you first select the range in a worksheet containing the data you want to chart. Now, once you've selected the range, you can use buttons on the Insert tab on the ribbon to create a chart based on the data in the range. Now, first of all, you need to make sure that you download your file, and this is the EXD1 file uh, on there from Course Sites. And of course, remember, go ahead and enable the editing if it comes up that way. And we want to do a save as uh, on there. And we want to save this file, of course, wherever you save your files. Uh, for me, I'm going to save mine onto my desktop, but you can save it to your home directory. And we want to save this as exd-quarterly tour expenses. Once you have switched, uh, changed the name on that to the EXD Quarterly Tour Expenses, you want to go ahead and click on Save. And of course now we want the chart to include the Quarterly Tour Expenses values as well as the quarterly uh, or the quarter and country labels. And we've actually seen an example of what we're going to be creating uh, in the last video. Now, you don't want to include the total column or the row column because the figures in these cells would actually make the chart you know, askew and make it uh, thrown off a little bit. Now, of course, a quick tip when charting data for a particular time period, make sure that all series are for the same time period. So that all these series here for all this, that's for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Now, step two on here tells us that we want to select the range and this is going to be A4 and we're going to go down to E12 so we're going to select this range right here A4 to E12 and of course once again one of the new features in uh, Excel 2013 is the quick analysis tool and that's what we're going to go ahead and click there now of course the quick analysis tool contains a tab that lets you quickly insert commonly used charts now the Charts tab includes buttons for each major chart type plus a More Charts button for additional chart types such as stock charts for charting stock uh, market data. So we want to click on the, chart tar uh, the Charts tab here, uh, which is step three. We want to click on the Charts tab. And of course we want to verify that the clustered column is selected. And of course, if it's not, you just want to click on that. And when you click on that, um, on there, it will give you this chart right here. Now, of course, a quick tip to base a chart uh, on data that is in non-adjacent ranges, which is if I wanted, you know, maybe quarter one and quarter three to compare those, uh, I could highlight my first range, and then I can press and hold my control key and then I can select my second range and then that is a way that I can compare two non-adjacent ranges uh, that's on there to compare. Once I clicked my cluster chart, the chart is now inserted in the center of the worksheet. And the two contextual chart tool tabs, which we see up here, the design and format tabs, appear on the ribbon. Now on the design tab, which is the currently selected one on here, uh, you can quickly change the chart type, the layout, and the chart style, and you can also swap how, uh, how the columns and rows of data in the worksheet are represented in the chart. Now, when seen in the normal view, three tools display on the right uh, of the chart, and of course these are going to enable you uh, to add, remove, or change chart elements, and that's this plus sign here, the paintbrush, and then of course the funnel. Uh, that's on there and of course um, of course we have uh, the plus sign in here uh, of course this is what allows us the plus sign is what allows us to add remove or change chart elements the paintbrush on here notice it allows us to set a style and color scheme and of course the funnel down here is going to allow us to filter the results shown in the chart and once again that's a new feature for 2013 now, of course, currently the countries are charted along the horizontal axis, uh, which is the x-axis, and with the quarterly expense dollar amounts charted along the y-axis. Now, this lets you easily compare the quarterly expenses for each country. 
Now in step four, it tells us that we want to go up here to our uh, design tab on here, and we want to go to the data group. And we want to click on the switch row and column button. And once we do that, now the quarters are now charted along the x-axis. Uh, and the expense amounts per country are charted along the y-axis. So you can see that switching the row and column, we still have our values here, but instead of having the different countries along the bottom, now we have the countries all in our legend uh, here, but now we have the different quarters uh, on there as well. Now, of course, you have to ask yourself which one is going to be more visually appealing. Now, are we, do we like to have all these different colors here and all the different bars? Or do we like the more simpler one where there's only four bars uh, on there and then we had a whole bunch more different categories? And step five actually tells us to click on the undo button. And when we do that, we notice that this is a little bit easier to read uh, that's on there because then we can break it down by category instead of saying, okay, well, you know, we can compare Australia together instead of saying, okay, quarter one's over here, quarter two's over here, and trying to match up the colors. So uh, this makes it a little bit easier to read uh, that's on there. So whenever you click on the undo button, that returns us back to this original design. Next, in step six, it tells us that we want to click the chart title place harder, uh, holder here. And of course, that is where it just says chart title. Now, of course, that's going to show the text box, which actually contains the, uh, the chart title. And of course, then next, you want to click anywhere inside the chart title on here. And that's going to allow you to edit the chart title. We want to press Control and A, and that's going to select all the text. And then we're going to name our chart here. Where we're going to give it a title of quarterly tour expenses and then of course to deselect this you just click on any blank area of the chart to deselect, to deselect it now of course adding a title actually helps to identify the chart now the border around the chart and the chart sizing handles uh, is the small series as we see here of dots at the corners and the sides of the charts border and of course that indicate that the chart is selected now your chart might be in a different location on the worksheet and may look slightly different. Uh, you will move and resize this later on in the series of videos. Now anytime a chart is selected, as it is now, a blue um, border surrounds the worksheet data range on which the chart is based, in which we can see that over here. So all this uh, is selected here for us. And of course, a purple border surrounds the cells containing the category access labels, and a red border surrounds the cells containing the data series labels. Now, this chart is what we call an embedded chart, and that's because it is inserted directly in the current worksheet, and it doesn't exist in a separate file. Now, of course, embedding a chart in the current sheet is the default selection when creating a chart. But you can also embed a chart in a different sheet in the workbook or on a newly created chart sheet. And of course a chart sheet is a sheet in a workbook that contains only a chart and it's linked to the workbook data. And of course one thing as well, and this is a great thing about Excel as well, is that if you would make changes inside of your data here, it will automatically update your charts. Uh, so that's an important tool uh, to understand as well. Uh, go ahead and save your work for now and then quickly take a look on page Excel 83 where it talks a little bit about sparklines and of course sparklines is a uh, new uh, feature on there and this is where you can quickly create the miniature chart called a sparkline that serves as a, the visual indicator of data trends and of course you can create a sparkline by selecting a range of data and of course clicking the quick analysis tool and then of course clicking the sparklines tab. Then you can click the type of sparkline you want. Now the sparklines appear in the cell immediately adjacent to the selected range so they're going to appear in a blank uh, cells uh, uh, to the range. Now you can also select a range and then click the insert tab then click the line, column, or when loss button in the sparklines group and in the Create Sparklines dialog box that opens, 
you can enter the cell in which you want the spark lines to appear and you can click on OK. And of course, we'll, um, you can play around with the spark lines on there. Um, you know, if I would just move this chart on here, I'll just briefly show you spark lines here. Uh, if I would just select this data here and go down to my quick analysis toolbar, uh, I can quickly go to spark lines and I can just show you here there's the column, uh, you know, here's the win loss. And there's some just some different ones that you can choose uh, from on there as well. But that is how you would go through and change those spark lines uh, on there. Uh, that concludes the information that's on pages Excel 82 and 83. Uh, make sure that you do go ahead and save your work and you're ready to move on to the next video.